Jeff Ball is much loved and hated by sportsmen in all sorts of ball games, caused by making the ball spin, here produced by rolling a table tennis ball down a long cardboard tube. The question we're looking to answer here is what causes the ball to curve? Let's try a rather more controlled situation. Rolling a table tennis ball down a ramp so that it spins and then hits the floor at a marked place. And just check exactly where it hits that we've marked it correctly. Secondly, we'll use a plastic ball, a much lighter ball, and you can see that it hits the paper just a little bit further in. But that could be explained by simple air resistance. The last part of the demonstration is a rolled paper tube. And that drops rather sharply. In fact, if we watch it again, it actually cuts back. The combination of spin and movement through the air is producing a force at right angles to the path. This is a side-on diagram of the tube of the ball, going from left to right and spinning so the front edge is going upwards. The bottom or edge of the ball is moving faster through the air because the rotation is towards the direction of the movement. The stream of air then breaks away from this surface, leaving a turbulent space behind the ball. The top edge of the ball is revolving away from the direction of movement, so that surface of the ball is moving relative to the air more slowly. The stream of the air on that side of the ball, or tube, therefore clings to the surface rather more, and because of that it's deflected slightly downwards. This overall change in the momentum of the air, in this diagram downwards, results in an equal and opposite force on the ball upwards. That's consistent with Newton's third law that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This force, perpendicular to the flight path and to the axis of rotation, is called the Magnus force. We can magnify the effect of the force if we use a very light cardboard tube which we spin very fiercely. That's what we're going to do here. Wrapping a piece of tape around the tube Attach two elastic bands, pulling it back, and as I let go, I'm allowing it to spin under my fingers. Changing the view of the camera, you can see the lift that this produces. And once again, more slowly. You can click on one of the links to watch videos on the Bernoulli and Coander effects here. Thank you for watching.